let's talk about this. Uh, Frida Wallace is host of Gender Nebulous podcast. A Podcast. Not something I've heard or listened to, have you? I wish I, I had now. Yeah. Um, Frida, good evening. Good evening, James. Um, um, I think we've spoken bat, before, haven't we? We have spoken before, yeah, yeah because uh, I've rung you quite a few times. Yeah. You yeah, annoy me then. usually, but listen, as I'm uh, feeling in such a good mood tonight, Frida, uh, tell me why uh, these uh, these people, a minority in the country, are so violent mm. and so annoyed with everything. It mm. seems to me everything. I'm not sure who's violent, James. You'd have to point to me to an individual. Well, uh, you could, I'm sure you've seen some of the clips of some of them fighting on the uh, on the um, mm. social media platforms. But generally, I mean, they seem to be very upset, hanging around outside J.K. Rowling's. Yep, I've they've not, attacked uh, to varying be honest, people. Uh, I've not seen anybody hanging around J.K. Rowling's mansion. Actually, I don't know where you got that from. Well, Kelly J. Just, Keen, that was the latest, uh, wasn't it? That was in the media a lot. That she. Well, Kelly. Well, let's let's talk about Kelly J. Keen. She's somebody that this radio, uh, this TV station has platformed quite a lot and quite uncritically. Because well, when she's she on, has her say, hang, she hang has on, her let say. Frida speak. Yeah, because. Frida. Yes, but the point is, she's she's allowed to speak, mm. but nobody's allowed. She's never challenged. She's allowed to speak from a. An what should she be challenged about, Frida? You should be challenged about the message she's actually sending. And what is the message she's sending, Frida? Well, first of all, it's duplicitous because she's saying, let women speak, I'm standing for women, but she doesn't actually do anything for women. The whole message is about trans exclusion. She tries... To, I mean, I've spoken to you about this what before. Do you, and I've, what do you... And we fall out regularly. I'm trying not to do that today because, quite frankly... No, you, you don't know. have to fall out with me. You um, just have to stay factual. I'll do what I want, thank you very much indeed, Frida. It's my show. If you want a show, get your own. Um... Are you smoking? I'm vaping. Well, don't vape on the show. I don't approve of it, OK? okay. And if you don't like that, tough. So anyway, okay. back to the point. So what is the pro? You know, you can be whatever you want. Uh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't until people in your position started shouting their mouths off that we got to this situation. So mm -hmm. why? What is the problem you have with the rest of us? It's not a problem I have with anybody. It's like I, I live my life, I have one of the most of my days. In my day-to-day -day life, I don't have a problem. There's no, nobody has a problem with me. I don't have a problem with them. This is simply, a, it's kind of a social media battle that people get themselves into. And a lot of it's performative. It's performative. Could I just stop us. you? Because we don't have a lot of time and you're waffling. So what I'm is it? No, no, don't disagree with me. Because then you'll get your point out if you do. What is it? You can't do it without vaping, can you, though? You know, problems everywhere. What is it that, that people who uh, criticise something about a bloke who wants to go dressed as a woman into a man's toilet... Do you think that's likely? I don't know. I don't, I've never seen it myself. Do you, think that's, do you think that's a likely scenario? I've no idea. Why do so many people get why upset would, about why it? Would a, why would, why you, would, want, bloke why would you want your child to grow up being called a... Them, they. Yeah. The they be. Well, that, that's, that's not happening. That's just something that... So you, you, don't you don't agree with having to use these ridiculously stupid pronouns? If, some, if somebody gets to a certain age and they say, I don't actually identify with either gender, that's up to them. Well, what it's age should that be? That's that, important, isn't it? What age should you... Well, it, no, it's, 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 it's to do with the parents and that child. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. Well, what about teachers know, not even telling parents? Well, if you're a teacher, uh, imagine you're a teacher and a child you can see is getting distressed and they say to you, I, I am identifying as a different gender, but please don't tell my parents. But then why are they putting their other sex name on the report card so the parents do find out then? Well, the thing is, we know that a lot of parents will shame their children for being You don't know that at all. You no, have we do no know idea. That. We do that. We you might, it might be some people are bad okay, parents, okay, but you don't know okay, that at all. OK, James, imagine this scenario. You have, a, you have a parent of a child that watches Julia Hartley Brewer every morning and believes everything she says. That child is going to be traumatised. It's, it's, it's a very good show. It's a very about? good it's show. Very good. And yeah. Julia speaks a lot of sense. And maybe, well, Julia's frightened maybe... to death of me because she won't let me talk to her. And I was supposed right. to go on her show and You she talk a lot of rubbish. Me. Probably that's why I she doesn't actually. Rubbish, You've not answered one of my but, questions. On, what is it the trans community are so angry about? What is it? I think what it might be is the constant media negativity. So, like, whenever there's a story in the news, like there was uh, recently, a, but there was a, a, a school shooting, the killer happened to be trans. So the, the headline is trans killer. Yeah. So what message does that send? But if it could have been woman killer or man killer. 
Yeah, but but you, the... you, you guys want to be known as trans, don't you? No, no, but the point Why is... do you want to be known as trans, anyway? I don't want to be... Trans is not an identity. It's just a delineation. You are cis, I am trans. So, I mean, but what is my... it... Uh, presumably, trans is somebody between uh, uh, operations, aren't they? No, it's, no, it's no. the transitional period. It's like, say, I, I started a transition from male to female. It's yeah. as simple as that. But no, you know? you're still trans after as well, aren't you? You're no, trans no, still, no, aren't you? No, no, no. But no, what no, I'm saying is trans no. isn't actually an identity. And no. my identity is free to female. That is an identity. <laughs> can we, um, can we, we've got so many people calling in. Can we, perhaps we take a couple of calls? Yeah, let's talk to some callers. Dorothy, you're on the air. Hello, through to uh, Frida. Yeah, how are you? No, no, I'm just listening to all the spot guys. No, think about it this. Um, <laughs> if somebody commits a crime and they have to go to a jail, okay, um, there are script shows and they are identified immediately and they have a birth certificate and they have everything connected to them that's going to um, assess their gender and it's men. They cannot go into a female yeah. Person. And they will be torn asunder because most of those women. Now, can I just say, explain myself here? Now, I'm, I'm a, a trained counselor now, and one of my colleagues goes into the uh, into a jail, and there are women in there that have been coerced, forced, and uh, persecuted by men, mm. and um, they have been in there for years and years and years because of some man and um, <laughs> Alright, I think we get the idea Dorothy, no, no, don't we, no, from yeah, don't. Uh, no, County... please stop. No, please stop Don't you there. dare tell me no, what to do stop. Goodbye <laughs> We get the point, Dorothy. Let's uh, get Frida to answer. Honestly, huh? I'm, I'm not sure quite over. what she was saying. Was she no, saying I think she was basically going prisons. from from uh, was she yeah. from County Clare? Uh, was she talking Kevin. about I think trans she was, women in yeah, prisons? Yeah, yeah. Uh, going into the wrong prison yeah. and then behaving oh. appallingly. But you know that is going to happen. It shouldn't be. It, well, no, it's not going to happen. Though, if you've it? got your genitals, then you go into a man's prison. Mm. Well, not necessarily. No, but you can still have genitals and be uh, of transition, can't you? I think the problem here is that, you know, we, 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 it's a very simplified version of what is seen as a threat. So, um, obviously, if you're dealing with the late, the, the recent case of Hyla Bryson, who was sent to, you know, the Scottish... Mm, I uh, do. So, I think in that situation, yeah, because of safeguarding, whatever the situation mm. is, that the prison system has to deal with that. But you see, these stories that mm. come into the media, they... They exist. I mean, but when... you're not telling me the question that I'm trying to get an answer to mm. is, you know, and I, you're not I, letting... I, I, I beg your pardon. You're not letting me finish what I'm trying I, to say. I, listen, James. I have to guide this. You have no idea what we are as far as time restriction. And now I've had to say that again. That's cut less time off. And you went on about Julia. Julia probably doesn't want you as a guest on her show. That's entirely up to her. Uh, I actually... of me. Oh, no, she's not frightened of you. You're too stupid for her to be frightened of. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and you're not answering any of the questions. You're waffling on. All you really want is to be a media celebrity. I know exactly yeah, what you want. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah that'd exactly. be brilliant. Yeah, but you're I'd be like Sue Pollard. Of course I do, because no, I'm, I'm a normal person. <laughs> you're not. No, no. Well, if you're going to be a normal person, you won't be any good on You can't be like Sue Pollard if you're a normal person. Yeah, no, I suppose. That's a, that's a very good point. I'm trying very hard to get... Could you pick me a thing up? Thanks. I'm trying very hard to, um, to get to the point of why certain sections of the trans society are so cross and angry about everything. And you've got a whole minute to answer it. We're not a trans society. We're not like a, a club where we all meet and we decide to be angry at something. This is some, you know, people, it's, it isn't like that. We're not a movement like that. And, and, and what we're angry at, as if you could say we're a community, is the constant negativity in the media. And this TV station is a, is a source of disinformation all the time. So what I was going to say TV about... This TV station is not a source of disinformation. It is. I have, well, so, then, I suggest... You're using trans I suggest as a leverage. That what as you do, as that. Uh, you're talking bollocks, to be quite honest. And I suggest right. that what you do is don't bother James. to appear on here. Goodbye. Uh, thank you, Frida. She won't be coming back on again. Don't watch it, Frida, if you don't like us. I'm mm. getting sick and tired of this. We are trying, I was trying, you were trying, oh, to actually get a point out which you don't seem to be able to answer. All you want to do is fudge everything. Mm. All you want Too to fluffy. do... Too fluffy. 
Yeah. Too what? She was too fluffy, fluffy. Yeah. Now, we we'll just get to the point. Tell us what you... You know, she's got a flipping podcast she wanted <laughs> to uh, promote. Well, that's not getting promoted. And then she moans about some of our colleagues. It's too wordy. Yeah. That's the trouble with all too wordy. You know. Just, you tell us what, what's going on. I'll tell on. you what. Let's close down every television channel and radio station that could upset people. Yeah. I warn people not to watch this programme. If you were around yesterday, you'll know... We picked up on an interview in the Sunday Times on Sunday with the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer. He was celebrating three years in post, and he was asked by the journalist on the Sunday Times, really picking up on a question he was asked here on this show, indeed by me, actually, just over a year ago, whether a woman could have a penis. And I asked Sir Keir on Cool Keir yesterday, exclusively on LBC, if he could clarify a statement he made at the weekend that 99.9% .9 of women didn't have one, which meant that one in a thousand did i was trying nick to create some um sort of common sense um frameworks to the discussion that we inevitably have by just starting with the common sense proposition that you know for the vast majority let's say 99.9 percent um but but you know biology matters um women have won many rights um smash glass ceilings um, one on equality and discrimination, and we can't roll any of that back. And in fact, there are more battles to be had for women. But Nick, there are, you know, as I've said to you before, yeah. there are a small minority of people but who not do one not. Thousand, Sakir. Sorry, well, I mean, Nick, ninety-nine point nine was just a general, the general sense. The vast, vast, vast majority. You can put whatever description you like on it, you like. But there are, you know, vast majority of women. This is biological. Um, it's very straightforward. We must never roll back women's rights. Now, if you think I have some bizarre obsession with this, let's go elsewhere in the world where it's becoming a live issue as well. I'm taking you to New Zealand. This is an exchange at a press conference between journalist Sean Plunkett and the New Zealand Prime Minister Chris Hipkins, in which the journalist adopted a similar line of questioning, uh, in, which I have with politicians. And here's what happened next. I just wanted to ask you, uh, given comments by Keir Starmer and Britain, how do you and how does this government define a woman? Um, I, to, to be honest, Sean, that's, that, that question's come slightly out of left field for, for me. Um, the, well, biology, sex, gender, um, people define themselves, people define their own genders. Keir Starmer has said that he believes 99.9% .9 of women do not have penises. And I know it's a strange thing for him to say, but given recent events in New Zealand, I'd ask again, how do you define what a woman is? Well, as I've, I, I think as I've just indicated, I wasn't expecting that question, so it's not something that I've, um, you know, formulated, pre-formulated an answer on. But um, in terms of gender identity, I think people define their gender identity for themselves. Well, I've got a view on that, but let's listen to Frida Wallace first, who's host of the Gender Nebulous podcast and joins me now. When you hear the reaction, particularly one you might not have heard, excuse me, <clears throat> from the Prime Minister of New Zealand, your reaction. Good morning to you. Hi, Nick. Well, to me, this is it's just not a serious question that is being asked of Keir Starmer or any politician. It's just clear that trans people are being used in a culture war polemic by journalists and a few, and it just benefits a few lobbyists. The guy you just mentioned, Plunkett, is part of a network of people who are, are very much on the right. And uh, he's, he's discussing there something which happened in New Zealand recently. We have an anti-trans uh, campaigner that's been in New Zealand. And she got royally told to go home, basically, by a lot of protesters. And they just don't like... See, the problem is, for me, this is a culture war polemic. It's not a serious question. And the reason Starmer is being asked this constantly is because he'll sit on do, the fence about it. Do you have children? No, I don't have children. Because I think some parents might be listening to this, Frieda, and saying, if we're in a situation where currently some schools allow mm. pupils to attend school and they effectively explore transitioning without knowledge of their parents and their knowledge being passed back from school, that becomes a hugely significant issue, Frieda. No, it's a significant issue between that child and the person they decide to divulge that information to. If you want to talk about safeguard, and we have to accept that some parents don't have the best interests of their children at heart, and when children do express distress about their gender, I think it's right for teachers to just withhold some things necessarily because they don't understand what's going on at home. And a lot, and we know historically that children are shamed. Well, we are no, we know that children are harmed by 
certain, you know, Christian organisations that can't be right not to bring mum and or dad, dad oh, in, yeah, in some sure. way, shape or form. Mm. Is it? But if a child, if a child explicitly says, "Don't tell my parents," you know that's a red flag. And but that's then you happening. have to explore. Do you not, Frida? Then have to explore why. I mean, you, that yes, doesn't you mean do, you immediately but... pick up the phone and ring mum. I hear you, but you wouldn't want a situation which has been the case that then that pupil continues for weeks into months and has not got emotional support at home. That That's not the way forward but, either, is it? But the thing is, there's absolutely no problem. There's no problem with a child expressing gender. Children express gender all the time. If a young boy says, oh, I, I identify more with girls, that's not a problem. It only right. becomes a problem if the parents and the teachers make it a problem. And were you to be asked, how would you define a woman? Uh, what I define a woman, it's just exactly how I express my gender. Trans people don't walk into rooms and go, I am a woman. We live in a, all our language in society is gendered. It's how we are. We live in a polite society. So all our language is based around expressing gender, not sex. It's about gender. So when somebody asks me how I identify, I'm Frida. No, no, but I, I, I hear that, Frida, and that's why I've addressed you as Frida and, and, and I've enjoyed our conversation. But were I to ask you for what your de a dictionary a definition of a woman might be, yeah. how would you respond? I'm an adult human female. You're an adult human female. And then if you come on to the fact that can a woman have a penis? Yes, some women do have penises because some trans women do have penises. But it's, it's, very, dis it's very dangerous to go down this road of dehumanising and reducing people why, to body why, parts. Why, why do you think because, the question no, Nick, it's objectification. It's objectification. When it... people think about trans people, they need to start thinking of them as human beings, not a collection of body parts. But if That's it, just ridiculous, Nick. If you want to take a lot of people on society on a journey so that they learn, they're going to mm. ask questions, Frida. Because yes, this is that's an, why this, I do the podcast. Indeed, hold on, hold on. This is an unknown area to them. So sometimes they might accidentally say something that is upsetting mm -hmm. to you. They don't because they're yeah, just try, upset me. They're just trying to learn. You, you must realize yeah. that. Yeah, that's fine. If, if people are coming at it from a uh, you know genuine questioning, you know what is I, I have conversations with people all the time about being trans, about gender. It doesn't have to come from a bad place. No. Well, I do, what I dislike is uh, media people using these culture war polemics to beat other politicians. And we just need to realise that, you know, the Tory party is leaning so far right that St Keir Starmer has to almost be right just to be the centre ground. And that's the problem. We need to stop voting this Tory party. Sorry. We need to start looking at some serious policies. And we're living in a cost of living crisis. This isn't really a big issue for anybody. Okay. Nobody asks me in my real life. We, I never have any arguments with me in my real daily life about being trans. This all happens on the internet. So, and you, you're exacerbating that, Nick. You're, you're not helping anybody. What, by seeking people to learn? No, people learn at their own rate. They will contact the people that when you write, when you're in a social media sphere, you're bound to see things all the time that you don't agree with, you don't right. understand, right? But you're not helping matters by using Keir Starmer as a whipping boy for this issue. I don't think I have the ability to use Sir Keir as a whipping boy, do I? I he is the leader of the opposition. Well, I think he's he's skilled enough to give his own views, isn't he? Frida? But the problem is, the, the problem is Keir. Uh, uh, the way I understand it, he's trying. To, he's sitting on the fence, and he, he knows but why that. Why does he need to do that? Well, I, I, that's the question you'd have to ask here. But the, for right. trans people and if my tra uh, trans women I know, we just we just sick of this constant culture war kind of you know divisive polemic against us because it's dehumanising oh. and it and it's it's not benefiting anybody. Okay. Well, I'm grateful for your time. I'm sorry if I've caused you any distress. Thank you for joining in our conversation. Frida Wallace hosts the Gender Nebulous podcast.